Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of MUN Talks, where I'm going to, where I'm going to be hosting two of the most prominent MUN figures uh, in Europe and perhaps for the moral uh, in, in the world for that matter, Jonas and Alex. Gentlemen, welcome <laughs> to MUN Talks. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Uh, Thanks for having us. We're so excited. Finally, we're recording an episode of a podcast again, huh, Alex? And somebody else prepared it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Some, someone at all prepared it. <laughs> Yeah, as, as close that, as we can get to a podcast. We actually do have a microphone. It's just that we're adding a bit more visualness uh, to it. Uh, um, so I'm so Alex, impressed, man. Yeah, thanks for joining. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, you know, I was actually planning to do a self-introduction for you to talk about everything that you've achieved over the years. But I was like, there, there's so much to talk about. So why don't you actually talk a little bit about yourselves, about your MUN careers, and, and, and tell us a little bit about yourselves, actually. So, Jonas, if you'd like to take... At the floor sure. Uh, with great pleasure. I'm I'm now at the end of my student career, and so I can say that uh, I started um, I started MUN back in 2014 at uh, the end of my high school student uh, career, and it became a little bit of an addiction since. Um, so it has carried me through my entire mechanical engineering studies, um, from running a local club to organizing a conference in Karlsruhe, uh, Carmen. And, and then participating in various forms, delegate, chair, organizer, and conferences really around the world. And this is also where the inspiration came from, uh, where, where I saw that MUN needs better tech. Um, the people who do MUN are not always the most techie people. And so I came back from a conference in New York a few years back with that idea for like, what became later on MEN Command, or really like in-conference, you know, software. Mm -hmm. And uh, when then COVID kicked in, um, we, that is uh, Alex, who's also with us here, but also another uh, Alex and, and Toby, started embarking on, on really making this idea of in-conference MUN software happening. Uh, we since took over a majority share in MIMAN, the world's largest MUN platform for everything before the conference, primarily, a registration, payment of participation fees, and so on. Mm -hmm. And so now we're building a whole, uh, what we call the Mooniverse. Um, we don't actually call it that. Jonas just likes to make up words sometimes. <laughs> I, I like the word, though. Alex, tell us about you. Uh, I'm Alex. No, I've, I've been doing MBN for a good, good bit as well. Uh, I started in high school, actually. Mm -hmm. 2012, I think it was. Um, and wait, that's like 10 years ago now. Yeah, um, did high school, went to uni, kept doing it, um, you know, being a delegate, try, grinding through, learning the hard way, uh, having teachers who couldn't teach, uh, so just learning by doing. And it's always been this pro process of, you know, in learning new things, you know, having the chance to really dig into something entirely new, mm -hmm. uh, having that immediate feedback from people where you see what works, what doesn't work, um, you know, organizing conferences myself, uh, especially in Constance, um, but also helping out other conferences, especially across Germany. Also Budapest, that was a fun time as well there, uh, trying funny, fun conference concepts. And yeah, I had pretty much been retired from Model UN and I'd started working a job um, in Karlsruhe um, when when I, well, one of my first weeks there, I, I knew the, the conference there was happening. So I just I decided to swing by the opening ceremony, say hi. And well, that's where I saw Jonas again after a long time. And well, it once again turned out to be a, a great opportunity to 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 learn a new thing uh, or a few new things actually. And well, two and a half, just over two and a half years down the road from there, uh, this is where we're where we're at now. And I'm going to save you me, save you <laughs> another storytelling of what you has already said. No, no, it, it, it's a pleasure, and I'm really glad that retiring period didn't last too long. I mean, the UN community would appreciate having you around. I mean, we, we keep retiring and then it just doesn't really work. So I guess yeah, it's true. speaking, yeah, it's just it's a period of retiring and then coming back over and over again. So, I mean, yeah. uh, Jonas already kind of touched upon that, but tell us a little bit about Immune Command for those who um, may have not heard about it yet. I mean, it's probably that most of the European uh, delegates already know about it, but yeah. um, for those who haven't heard of Moon Command before, tell us a little bit about Moon Command and wh where did the idea come from and how was the process more uh, so? Yeah, right. I mean... Jonas, okay, Jonas, go ahead. You're, you're, uh, okay, let, let, let me start with the, your favorite thing to talk about. Off of like how we actually got there, because 
I was I was chairing. Uh, I think that was only the second time chairing um, at Future We Want in New York. In mm -hmm. front of me, there's a huge General Assembly double delegate, high school, mostly first timers, and I felt like, why does this roll call on the third day after lunch break, when really all we want is to debate that one amendment and get done with it? Why does this roll call just to know who's there take thirty mm -hmm. minutes? It just doesn't make sense. And That's so, really you know, like I, I can use Mentimeter or software like that, where it's like, here's the QR code, tell me if you're there or not. But it doesn't work because we need a login based solution where mm -hmm. each and every user delegate has their own login. And so that's what we made happen. Um, Alex, what, what does that mean in terms of like, you know, helping, helping delegates? Yeah, I mean, and it's really not about helping delegates uh, as much. It's it's really about helping everybody at conference. You know, um, I, I I spent so much time sharing uh, all those years using I don't know. I'm sure you remember WX one uh, from way back when, uh, or yeah, many years ago. I once I, I found we found I think Chairman, uh, and and not afraid of, of of naming those platforms. And I was so excited. Remember using Chairman because it was colorful, like. I was so excited. It was colorful. I was like, that is the future of MBN. Uh, and I used it and I was a bit disappointed because the workflows just weren't, you know, as efficient, it, it seemed, as in WX. -Men. So I went back to WX. -Men. But uh, 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 that just also didn't feel quite contemporary anymore. So when Jonas, when we got this group together and I was like, ah, oh, I, I guess I have thoughts on MBN, so, so maybe we can make something happen. And we quite quickly realized that um, with a tech that's accessible and available today, it's actually really feasible to build a platform that really, really elevates the MUN experience for every single person participating in the conference. Not just the chairs, not just the delegates, and not just the organizers, but literally every single person involved. And we realized that potential was there. Um, and, and we really, uh, then it, it was such a fun process to think way back when we, we just sat together in like this free co-working space in Karlsruhe where one of uh, Toby had a bit of a connection to, and we wrote like post-its of like what's bad with existing MBN software and like what needs of different organizers, chairs and delegates have to be and, and should be covered. And, and for a long time, just Jonas and I just sat down and, uh, like creating sketches of possible screens for like phones uh, for a possible phone app on 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 a platform called figma it's like a sketching app mm. and it looked so bad i remember there being like a, the meme of a dog walking through the ga and being like on the front <laughs> front page of that um, obviously that didn't make it but we did we had many iterations and 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 at the end of the day it was all about making model un more accessible and, mm. and making it more accessible for everybody um so making it more accessible for organizers because we want i mean uh, we're going to talk about it later right later on as well but we want every single student in the world mm -hmm. to attend at least one mbn conference in their student career because it can give them so much and we make it more accessible for organizers so there can be more conferences more easily organized with a high quality because organizer you know you don't have to worry about quite as many things because we make it so much easier for you um, for okay. chairs, we can allow chairs across the world to enable a, a, a much more intense and, and, and comfortable debate quality by providing you software that enables you rather than holds you back where you have to worry about what am I going to use for this and that. And, and then also, as Jonas mentioned, waste time. And again, for delegates, this accessibility thing is, I feel, so important because how many first-time delegates have you had in your committees who were, I mean, we were all there, like, sitting there, like, mm -hmm. what? What is this moderated thing? Why is he standing up now? Why why were he walking to the front earlier? How much how much speaking time? What ah help? Right? And by giving everybody access to 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 have a look at that on their own phones, on their own devices at any time, check out the different motions there are, check out the different modes there are with good explanations, with great usability as well. That makes your first MN experience just so much easier, so much better. And that also means that at your first conference already, you can really participate and get involved, get engaged, rather than sitting there and thinking about, you know, what is a moderated caucus for two days. But yeah. Maybe one, one word on that. I um, always say that IMEN come out was built for Zimbabwe. 
even though that's not entirely true. But the point there is that you know Zimbabwe in the last row, the last seat, and no matter how high they raise their placard, they will never be seen. They will <laughs> never be taken. And yeah. uh, this is you know where where tools like MEN command can kick in, and and if you can just add yourself to the speakers list uh, with the tap of a button on a phone and independent whether you're you know afghanistan or zimbabwe i mm -hmm. think that's a game changer in terms of integrating people but also the statistics are uh, that you know get automatically created and allow chairs to to you know uh, choose who's next to speak and so on and, and address those people mm -hmm. get better feedback so much yeah i mean definitely I, I, was, I was never zimbabwe but i was uganda during the very first official conference of my delegate career so to say so i definitely have an idea of how that feels to be at the very <laughs> back row uh, especially if the committee isn't swapping the positions every now and then. Um, but I really like that the thing that Alex mentioned about engaging so much, because I think every MUN software, the ones you named, the other you know softwares that I've, I've personally tried before, I, I've been to conferences where they literally use Excel sheets to um, to chair the conference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the face expression, Jonas. Um, Actually... Yeah. Just one note on this. Uh, when we started off, we made this like uh, survey, which we sent out to MEN friends of like, you know, what what are yeah. the problems and stuff that Alex referred to. And uh, one one friend of ours, he wrote, "It doesn't make sense. You know, we're all putting on nice suits, looking so great, having a tie, <laughs> and then we're using software that looks like WX man. Like, come on." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know, I know what you mean. <laughs> and uh, hey, massive kudos to whoever made WX man. Like, we're not dumping on you quite frankly no, i, I use that it, i love this software i used it for what six years probably mm -hmm. and but yeah anyway it's yeah. just the internet has moved on and I yeah, think yeah. It's, it's, we needed it's, more uh, more innovation in the community i guess and that's that's why you guys actually did so so i think a lot of us are grateful to you to you in that matter so look, talk so before we I, I want to before we move on yeah, and I, I don't see any other question leading into this yet. I'm just gonna okay. we're gonna front load this with MUN command, and I, I thought this was kind of a fun story because what we haven't talked about yet is documents. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And I, I don't want to bore you, but we were like, oh, we need like a document management thing. When we built, we we're like, okay, that, has, that is important. This is the most valuable has, part of MUN command today. It is though, yeah. As it has turned, now we've seen it operate for like nearly two years, and it's literally the one thing that helps out the most in debate. Yes, it's nice with the role call. Yes, it's nice adding people to speakers to see and there. That's kind of fun. But the document management, that everything is shared with everybody in one click without having to send stuff around on WhatsApp or email and then uploading it to Facebook groups or WhatsApp groups or this and that. And, and so we have this integrated document though where people submit it as a motion. It's already, the document is already there. Shares can approve it as well. So it's already that. It's, it's all in there and there's always one click to take it to the next step and in the end everybody has it and that has actually turned out like we always thought it's a bit boring documents but having used it ourselves now that is actually the one thing that for us as chairs and even as delegates because it can be like all right delegates two minutes to read it it's just you know when it's crushed, there's actually better debate we, we actually uh, alex i think on yours uh, mark doesn't say debate better no no it just has a gavel <laughs> oh, okay. It only has the gavel. Okay, we got to print some some debate better mugs. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But no, I, I really feel what he says about the documents because the this summer was actually the first time that I chaired in a conference where MUN command was used like as as the software. I was in Euroman chairing a council. Oh, really? oh, nice. Oh yeah, and and yeah, that specific part about the documents, what Alex just mentioned, was just mind blowing. You know, not having to send people to print out stuff, and then just have this one platform where everyone can access documents. It was just really really convenient. So moving a little bit towards the Miami UN side of things, which I think is is something that a lot of our audience is very familiar with. So I think it was last year that you took over from a mistake in Miami UN, uh, arguably one of the most prominent platforms to perhaps anyone who has done MUN so far. So how did that process evolve and what are the, some of some of the future plans about it? Because I recently checked the website and it really has changed the look of it. I haven't been there in a while. Um, I can already see that a change is happening. So I just want to first ask about the process and how it evolved and also what are some of the future plans about that platform? Alec, can I share the anecdote with the post-it that uh, you, you remember? Yeah, I think, I think that's fair to share. <laughs> so <laughs> the, it's going to be a nugget for the listeners. Uh, so Alex referred to like how back in the days we referred to like the problems in MUN that we wanted to address with MUN yeah. command. And we remember uh, vividly how one post that we wrote, it just was like Maimon and 
you know, a pile of shit that was stinking. <laughs> and so we made a lot of pictures back then and um, put them in a drive. And now we have Jazz and our social media team. She has access to those pictures. And, and a few months back, she was like um, sending out what she was, you know, uh, wanted to, to post. And mm -hmm. then we see that picture and we're like, no, Jazz, like we can't post that. Have you seen that posted in the back? Because funnily enough, uh, Robin, the, the founder of Myman, uh, reached out to us uh, relatively early on, I'd say. Um, that must have been summer of early summer. Yeah. Yeah. And so he reached out. Uh, Robin actually became a father this year. So he now quite literally has a new baby. And so you can see how he just kind of grew out of Maimon um, and, and, and moved on there. And so for us, it was a huge irony that, you know, starting with that poster, now we're kind of like the ones responsible. Mm -hmm. But when we took over MIME in early 2021, I think it was clear for all four of us that um, we wouldn't take over MIME to keep on going the way MIME used to be, mm -hmm. but really to make it what you see today. Uh, two months ago, we launched that massive update um, that was so important because I always describe that, you know, we didn't have the time to build a fence because we were busy catching all the chicken. And mm -hmm. uh, you can take that as a, you know, as, as a reference to how we were like supporting here and there, trying to fix this bug and make that better, when actually we needed that time to build a new Maiman, which we now have. Is it perfect? I guess not. But we're now at a stage where really we can, you know, build the platform, make it better. And what we're, the fixes that we're building now, they're there mm -hmm. to stay. And so this is super exciting. Uh, Alex, which parts did I miss? Yeah, no, I mean, that's quite accurate. Uh, um, it's, and, and, you know, when we said that Maimon wasn't that great, I think, uh, obviously, it was Robin who, who worked on it a lot. And then they, he, had, he had one IT man uh, who supported him. And uh, to me, I think it's quite incredible how, how they were able to build it. Um, yep. But yep. what was also quite clear is that uh, Matt's, uh, he's just, he was just, he was not a, a, a user experience design kind of person. Like, uh, that, and, and I think that sort of showed with the way Maimon was before we did the relaunch now. Um, to where both for organized and for for um, for chairs and whoever applies or delegates, um, it just wasn't a fantastically seamless experience that we would have loved it to be. And that was one of the the, the things we wanted to tackle with rebuilding the front end, but also giving it once again the sort of community feeling uh, of yeah. Myman should be a place where the community comes together, and it really is. You know, between organizers, chairs, and delegates, you know, it's it's a platform where everybody comes together and it should also have this warm feeling uh you know where we provide uh services to the community be it on social media or we have a lot of fun things coming up uh, as well in terms of training um and, and and stuff like that where um it has that overall vibe it's hard to describe you know business. yeah yeah exactly um so we wanted to bring that back for sure and, and rebuilding it you say it looks different yes uh, and, and, and that's, of course, uh, clear, but it should also, I guess, feel different and should be a lot way, should a lot, a lot, be a lot easier to use. It's been generally one of the most difficult, it's been the most difficult, difficult thing we've done, I think, uh, all of us, over this, this good so year and a half that, so that we've far, worked on. Yeah. No, it's between, because we, we rebuilt, so it, it's not like we took it and changed the buttons a bit, right? Mm -hmm. We built, rebuilt it from scratch, um, the, the visual side of it. So the, the back backbones of it they were really strong and solid Matt's built is amazingly well um, yeah. but the, the visual side of it was built using a bit ancient technology and that was not supported anymore so we kind of had to rebuild it from scratch anyway and we also used to have to really think about every aspect of it to think how can we make that a better experience where whoever's using it and how can we make it simpler easier to use and yeah just how can we make people want to come back and to not just attend one conference, but mm -hmm. also attend the second one and, you know, also make attending that first conference that much easier without having to get lost in application funnels or whatever. Process and stuff. Yeah. No, I hope that makes sense. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just like, this has been in our brains for the last year and a half and it's driven us mad. So if it doesn't make no. sense, please call us out. 
No, it, it does make sense. It's just that both with Munkman and with Miami, and I can see how you're trying to take it out of the one simple role that it initially was associated in people's mind with and give it a more comprehensive role. You know, in, in the case of Miami, wow. they're not just a platform for people to apply, but a platform where they can come back to, a platform where they can use to train for. And I think that's quite impressive, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's quite impressive. So to move on to somewhat of a general question, when I check Moon Command website, there's this really um, fun and an interesting video of, of the two of you welcoming us to the website. And there, there was this phrase, and I quote, uh, you, that you guys want to make sure every student participates in at least one MUN throughout their student career. And for you know, members of our audience who may not have done MUN before or who may not you know, perhaps consider MUN to be as important, because you don't say every student pursuing this or that degree, you just say every no, student in general. Every right? single that, student. That's a very broad category. So I want to know <laughs> very quickly, why do you think is this so important? Why would a student really want to do it, at least one MUN before they, they graduate for that matter? Alex, I think it was you who formulated it first, huh? Yeah, we were on my couch in, in Gals and we were like, we need a vision. I think that's a good one. <laughs> okay. No, but like, no, genuinely, no. I said it earlier, like we took away so much from that. Like you would have not wanted to hear me speak English before my first like good handful of conferences. It was really bad. You would have not wanted to see me write anything in English before that time. In fact, you would have probably not wanted to talk to me before that time. Um, so just in terms of those soft, but also hard skills, um, it teaches people so much. Um, and this can be valuable and no, it, it is going to be valuable no matter what your career is. If you're going to be an engineer, you still have to talk to your colleagues and tell them why making the bend round is better than making it an angle. Uh, or if you are, if you are uh, in, a, in a design agency, you know, you're still going to have to talk to your customers and try to tell them why this campaign, you, why you're building it the way you're building it. Um, and just those communicative skills are built in MUN in a way that I think there's no other way to build them. Um, that's why we think, that's one of the reasons why we think everybody should do it. But also creating an, this idea of, and I think this is not foreign to any of us, developing this understanding for, diff, for another position. Um, you know, it can be so, so difficult when you're working in teams to like, why don't they think like I do? Why don't they want it the way I do? It makes sense. You know, through MUN, you know, we, we think it's very likely that you will think, oh, yeah, it, I see where you're coming from, mate, but like, I have an argument here. Voila. Uh, and if everybody in the world just did that, I think it could just be such a, a little bit of a better place. Don't you think so? For mutual understanding, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, if I can add one thing, which which I to, to me always makes, makes up for a lot is as well the the people, the friends I got through MUN, um, the last year I studied here in Paris, and okay, yes, I had my engineering class there, but the people I was hanging out with the most are the people from the different MUN clubs of this city. And this is just one tiny example of um, what a fantastic band and mix of people you meet, especially for me as an engineering student, I was always happy to make my engineering student bubble pop a little bit and talk with people who study, I don't know, medicine and uh, uh, French language and politics and law and God knows what. And, and, and I always felt like I had the better conversations when the groups were, um, you know, as, as, as colorful as uh, you could imagine. And I think MUN really delivers on that, uh, you know, on top of the points that Alex mentions and, and many other factors that I think, uh, you know, Rene uh, remain unnamed until now, but just so much that that we pers we feel like we are who we are thanks to what we did in MUN. Mm -hmm. And literally, <laughs> maybe others can correct us, but we feel the outcome has been all too bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 literally. I mean, I really agree with that. Yeah, when you say that it's it's this very platform where it gives you the the, the opportunity to, to engage and, and to meet people from different backgrounds. Because you know, I've I've been to university in two different countries, so I have an idea of how, how, how campus life works. And from personal experience, I didn't have any other activity whatsoever that was so much. Um, you know that that had a role to bring so many different you know people together than MUN. So I think I really feel you when you when you say that. Um. Yeah. So. When you look at the bigger picture, so even at World MUN Day, you know, Immuners Across Borders, we're having a similar goal to, to increase engagement between, between different, you know, stakeholders 
uh, when it comes to MUN, you know, participants, delegates, organizers, NGOs, the UN itself for that matter, and also give something back to this community, which is something that you guys have, have done so much for. So how do you think these initiatives, you know, MUN Kwan, my MUN initiatives like us can maximize cooperation in that regard and, and perhaps to utilize it for positive change? Like what's the ground for these initiatives to cooperate on? I mean, we all have, I think, look, it's not like what we described as our vision just now is like something that's particularly unique. Right? Yeah. I think we, we just sat down and we're like, why are we doing this? What What is so special about MUN? And we sat together, we just put it into those words. But I think at the very core, most of us are driven by some version of that vision. Um, and, and I think that really brings us together in a fantastic way. And uniting behind that, and everybody has their own strengths. You know? uh, for us, we tackle this vision by saying, look, we will make it our mission you know, to make MUN accessible for everybody. We will facilitate it. We will enable that um, by... Um, uh, building tools which which make it easier to, to do all of that or make it more fun or whatever. Um, everybody has a special special uh, skill. And I think uh, when I think back to last year's Model UN, well, Model UN Day um, or, or even the year before, um, it was this fantastic coming together of, of, of all those different specialities, those different skill sets um, uh, uh, where everybody had sort of this contribution, a celebration of the Model UN community with all this one goal, you know, uh, of, of, of bringing the world more, forcing more, more modern UN uh, into the world, um, but also learning from each other and, 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 and being stronger together. Definitely. Yeah, I would, I would add to that, like, we can't um, in any way achieve our vision uh, without having fantastic partners that we're working with. Uh, to make the most simple example of this, we don't organize MEN conferences. So how can we um you know move towards every student participate in an MBN mm -hmm. conference when we don't even organize one so we're yeah. relying on um you know a huge network of MBN you know conference organizers uh organizing fantastic conferences to give you know one example but it's so much more than that there's people who are doing amazing training programs uh for MUN uh, you know delegates um, all of this kind of comes together and we see our part really at this, you know, facilitatory stage where we're like giving the tools so that, you know, organizers can do what they're best at, delegates can debate better, uh, chairs can, you know, steer committees in a more efficient and integrative way. I think, you know, all, all those ways uh, are, are just there, but from this kind of technology approach where we feel we have the largest lever, uh, you know, to, to, yeah. to move towards that. Definitely, definitely, and as you said, that the importance of partnerships is really there uh, in order to you know achieve the goals because we all don't have the same strengths. That's for sure. We all have different strengths, Absolutely. but not the same ones. All right. So moving on to the final part of this conversation, where I'm hoping to keep things a little more casual. I mean, we talk a lot about MUN, the bigger picture, you know, the, the engagement efforts. But to make things a little bit personal, very quickly, could you both tell me one unforgettable MUN memory that you had? And I'm going to keep this very general. Could be a delegate memory. It could be the the conference where you had the best sharing experience and an unforgettable social night, whatever, whatever. Uh, so a very quick memory from uh, both of you. I know it's it's too general for people like you who had such a long and human career. Uh, but but the, the the first thing that comes to your mind, perhaps. Alex, you got one. Yeah, I was gonna say last year when we became honorary honorary members of of Monica, where. I, I might have cried a little bit during the closing ceremony. Oh, wow. But yeah, no, um, it's, I think the one thing that really flashes to my mind was in Budapest, uh, don't ask me which year. Uh, we went there with, with a few friends and we, we had sort of developed a security council concept where we would simulate the different bodies of the uh, subsidiary bodies of the security council, like uh, ISIL sanctions committee, DPRK sanctions committee, whatever. They would debate on their individual things and we would have like this core security council with the ambassadors in it and they could sort of coordinate policy between everybody a little bit anyway we did that and we kind of went to budapest to help them implement it and in the security council i think it was just a massive meltdown of horror uh, at the end of it and it was an absolute crisis and one of the chairs banging his fist on the table and a, a pen flying through the air and it wasn't wasn't my proudest moment, I'm not going to lie. Um, 
because I just didn't keep my cool as, as, as well as I would have liked to. I wasn't the one with the fist, by the way. Um, but still, it, 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 it stays in my memory. And, and in the end, it all turned out well. But I don't know. It, it, it was one of those humbling moments. And it was deep, deep into my Indian career. It's, it's maybe what, six years in, maybe more. Uh, and, and I sat there and I was like, oh, God, there's still a lot to learn. So no matter how many conferences you go to, I suppose, there's always something. So let me add to that because I felt I was thinking uh, of a bunch of moments, but I was just thinking of uh, earlier this year. Um, I was in, in the south of France at Medman, and mm -hmm. although I, you know, I was technically too old for the beginners committee, I applied for the French speaking beginners committee because my French was still uh, rather rudimentary. And so um, here comes this 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 weird Jonas guy who's sitting in a committee full of first timers. All of them spoke wonderful French, except for me. So I, I may have known a little, you know, more about like how NUN works. But when it came to the language, I had the same barrier that, you know, I was having with English. It was bad. And yeah. I said, this really was my second first time there because it was an extremely humbling moment, extremely grounding and extremely being like, yeah, I mean, that's how how it feels to be a first time standing up there losing losing the words don't know you know what next to say um and that has been has been very grounding at the same time uh, i remember writing in in the uh, resolution and then with uh, people who were native and french they would kind of clean up my grammar mess uh, <laughs> right after uh, me and that was a fantastic way of working together again bringing together kind of the you know different profiles of strength um, into into one product into the resolution in that case and that was uh, really heartwarming to see that community there and i can say that my friends really did improve in that two three days of conference i mean i'm sure but that is felt much more empowered than they would have otherwise been in a, in a beginner community where they also feel that they have something to offer um the chairs you know something to perhaps help them with um and very quickly before we leave uh in a minute if, if possible if you were to describe members of your team, because I think both Munkaman and, and Miami and teams are overlapping with yep. just uh, yes, it's the same. The it's, it's hundred percent the same. Hundred percent the same. Okay, because yeah, okay, yeah. that must have been my bad. So, with one word and why? So, I guess we can start with Jonas, because then it's going to be overlapping. Both of you will use a word for each other as well. I, I hope he's not going to use the same one, but I'm going to use Mister Post It because uh, okay. Alex was always the one writing post its and sticking them all over, being the methodology guy. Okay. Way back when, now it's you. Anyway, uh, Jonas, it, it's ideas because he always has ideas and sometimes it gets out of control and I just sit there and quiet and let them sort of flow over me and write a post about it and put it on the backlog. <laughs> so, like you, you complete each other in that matter, you know, one of them being organizing and the other one one being with the ideas. So I guess a little bit, like maybe, yeah. Dream, dream team. Uh, who else? Uh, Alex Dietz, I would say carrots. Oh yeah, hundred percent carrots. Um, and, and why is uh, that? Let me ask. Uh, he he just likes to eat, eat carrots. You know, we oh. would spend like weekends in our co co working space, literally like sixteen hours plus a day. You know, uh, uh, just working away. And when we would get together for a weekend, we would always go past by supermarket first and just buy some sweets and stuff. And Alex would always just get a bag of a kilo of carrots uh, <laughs> and bananas. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but he carries the bananas to stack on and uh, Harry about gummy bears. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, and I think there's also Toby in the team? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Toby must then in that case be the startup uh, methodologist or something. Toby is, uh, because at first he has never done an MUN, so he was really great with, you know, bringing the startup methodology into it because mm -hmm. we structure. Never I think structure to... is a good word. Yeah. There you go. We never plan to, you know, build an, an enterprise or something, a startup out of it. But like, yeah. at one we point, we are not read an enterprise. I think that's a bit well, of a big okay, word for us. Call it, call it a startup <laughs> or something. But at one point, you just have to develop a little bit of, you know, um, economic framework yeah. or whatever you want to call it. And and Toby was amazing help in that process. Yeah, amazing guys. I mean, amazing. Uh, and there's obviously a, our team is large by now, uh, but they're not quite as public facing. I'm not sure. Yet. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep an eye on those to, to see if there are going to be any expansions in the team. Yeah, we will. We will. We we can do like one word things for when we do the next uh thing for 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 all the others as well. Yeah. Next when we do the next podcast.
hopefully hopefully yeah and then i will keep on the podcast as well because i i don't know if it was only me but i didn't see a new episode after that one that the one that i listened oh to. no we did not oh well we, we haven't done one in probably more than a year yeah alex maybe it's about time now with the new front end huh yeah maybe oh yeah that would have been a good idea wouldn't it I, mean, I think we need somebody to facilitate. Today. Yeah, we need a moderator though. Like, I feel like this was fun and great. Uh -huh. but, and, and if we just had somebody talking us through the thing, when we, we, even just for our side, mm -hmm. I think it would be it would, it would make things a lot better. Well, we can definitely keep in touch after this conversation as well. <laughs> okay. All right, our newest team member, uh, Tariq, how, how can I... <laughs> I mean, if I see the post about new uh, positions being open in Munkaman or in Miami, and I'm definitely going to send over the resume. Guys. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on the Instagram channel. All right, good plug. Yeah, sounds good. All right, thank you, Jonas and Alex, for for joining us. It was definitely a pleasure, and I can't think of a better episode than than having such uh, prominent MUN uh, you know members than for the oh, you know, episode of, of MUN talks. So thanks for joining. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much, Tarek. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait, Jonas, we have to do our sign off. Uh, oh, yes. Together, we're excited to debate. Better. <laughs> is it debate better or is it debate the world? Because I think you've used both. We use oh, both. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. We, we, we started with debate better, then our social media jazz had the idea of debate the world. And uh -huh. well, this is just for old times' sake when we did the podcast a million years ago. Okay. Anyway, we're goodbye. It's been such a pleasure. Now. Yeah. All right. All right. Then we're going to debate better together, hopefully. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.